Hello, my name is Aviva and I've decided to start a reading vlog to see if I can get myself out of a reading slump. So the last two books that I read did not go so well. I read A Shadow in the Ember, which I ended up giving three stars. I vlogged the experience and myself reading that. So if you wanted to see it, I'll make sure to have that vlog linked down below. But anyway, after that, I decided to pick up a book called all You're Perfect by Maya Hughes. I'm pretty sure that what it was. But anyway, I ended up almost DNFing it. I didn't. I actually like made my way through it, but it was such a bad book that I was almost going to DNF it, but it was like 10 o'clock at night and I had nothing else to do. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just keep reading just because if I put it down, I'm just going to end up wasting time watching TV because I hate starting books at 10 p.m. But anyway, that was last night. And today I went and I got my hair done. I redid my color. I got a little bit of a haircut and I came home and I chose a new book to read and that book is Not My Match by Isle Madden Mills. So I've read one book by Isle Madden Mills before called Dear Ava and I really enjoyed it. I think I either gave it four or five stars. I don't really remember. But anyway, it was good enough that I decided I'm down to read more of her work. So I bought this in my last book haul and I decided to randomly pick it up because I don't know, it was intriguing. It is like some sort of sports romance. I'm pretty sure the main guy is I think a football player and anyway the main girl is the guy's best friend's new wife's little sister. I think that this is the second book in a companion series and I didn't really realize that until I started reading this book and now I'm like oh my god I'm missing a little bit but it's okay because it's just a companion series and I'm getting all the information. I just I'm assuming that there were some scenes in the first book that I am missing but it's fine. But anyway I'm in page 50 and I realized that I'm having a little bit of a hard time like concentrating on this book. Like I keep putting it down but the thing is I really don't think it's the book. I think it's me and I think it's because my last two books weren't good that I'm in a reading slump. So I decided that I'm going to randomly start a reading vlog. You know, I usually like planning these things, but I'm like, you know what? Better late than never. So I'm 50 pages into a book. I'm starting this reading vlog to see if hopefully this book will get me out of a reading slump. But if not this book, then we're going to keep on reading books until I'm fully out of it. So I have no clue how long this vlog is going to last. I don't know what books I'm going to be reading in it, but hopefully this will be a fun experience to see if I can get myself out of a reading slump by picking some good books. So last night I ended up reading like three quarters of this book and I finished up the last little bit that I had left this morning and I want to tell you how it went but before I do I did want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor which is Time. They are this like accessories company that sells like prescription glasses and sunglasses and handbags and jewelry and all that sort of stuff. And anyway, they were so kind to send me two pairs of glasses. So this is like a clear one. And then they also sent me these like tinted ones, which are like sunglasses. Anyway, they're really cute. And if you want to check out all of their products, then I'm going to make sure that their website is linked in the description below. But anyway, back to the book. So I don't think it's the best sign that I didn't have any updates for you guys as I was reading it that I just finished it on my own and figured I would just tell you how it went at the end. So I didn't really love this book, but I think it was like a waste for me to read it now because I saw so much potential in it. And I just think that like I wasted it. I ended up skimming most of this book because I just wasn't into it. So let me tell you why. This is the second book in a companion series. And I realized right away that I was missing a lot. There must have been something in book one that really started to build up the relationship that's in this book. And once we got to this book, they basically like jumped in to like them already being into each other. And like the main guy was really like possessive of her and was already having all of those feelings that I really like to see when I'm reading a romance, except I didn't see the buildup of it. And I'm only assuming that the buildup was in book one and therefore like you were supposed to read book one and then you get to book two and all of a sudden you're so excited because you saw the chemistry like coming off the page in book one of this side couple. My problem is is that because I only jumped into book two, I missed all of that and therefore I wasn't fully connected to them and I didn't really feel the chemistry and I felt like I was missing out on something. So the thing is, is I've read a lot of companion series in the past and I usually see one of two things. You either get a companion series where once a couple gets their own book, they just like start fresh and it's like, oh, you met this guy in book one and all of a sudden he's going to have a love interest in book two and you get to have their story right from the start or maybe they knew each other, but like everything is built up right from the beginning. Like that's a pretty like basic 
basic thing for a companion series. And then you also have some stuff where you kind of saw a couple getting to know each other in one book and then all of a sudden they get their own book and then they basically retell you all of the beginning stuff. It's a little bit much because if you read book one, then all of a sudden you're reading it again from these people's perspective. So it kind of feels a little repetitive, but that is the two main things I've seen. And I usually don't like the whole repetitive aspect. Like I remember reading a series where it was like, I literally saw the same exact scene just from this couple's point of view, where in book one, it was like, we saw them on the sidelines, just like flirting with each other. And then in this book, it was like, okay, well now we see them flirting with each other. And like, you know, it kind of just doubled over so that the beginning of their relationship and all of those initial sparks really started at the beginning of their book. So that is how I usually see companion series. And unfortunately in this book, they did it neither of them. They just, they like didn't tell you the beginning sparks. And that is really what I need when I'm getting into a romance. And sometimes I would let it slide. Like if the book was good enough, like I would just let that go over my head and I'd still be really into it. Except I'm in a reading slump. So I really needed those initial sparks to help me get through this book. And because I didn't get that, I feel like I very much wasted this book. I feel like if I did read book one and then went and read this book, this book would have ended up getting like four or possibly even five stars. Like it was really steamy. It was dual POV. It had a great writing style. It had really fun scenes. It was built up pretty solidly and the story in itself was really good. I just wasn't connected to the romance. And I know that that just sometimes happens in romances, but I really think that it wasn't like the author's problem. It was my problem that I didn't read book one. And therefore I'm very upset that I actually read this book, but it wasn't so much my fault because I didn't realize that there was a previous book before this until I started reading this. And then someone told me like, I really should have looked it up. But usually when you get into companion series, it's just like, oh yeah, you could totally read them out of order. Like it's totally fine. And for some reason I bought this one and not book one and it was a mistake and I'm a little bit upset about it, but Maybe in the future I'll buy book one and then do a reread of this one because I really think that I like wasted its potential on a reading slump. So very unfortunate, but I'm not even going to bother giving this an actual star rating because I really think that it wouldn't be fair to say that because this book had so much potential. I just wasn't in the right headspace for it. A little longer than a few minutes later. So when I'm in a reading slump, I have a really hard time picking out my next read because I don't want to pick up a book that I really do think is going to be really good, except it's like just the wrong time to read it. Like I can't really explain it, but you don't want to waste a good book on a reading slump. And then at the same time, you don't really want to pick up a book that you know isn't going to really be five stars. It's just going to be a good time. But what if it's not a good enough time? Then it's just going to put you further into a slump. So it's like this really fine line of picking out the exact book that's just going to like fit your needs for the moment of your slump. Anyway, when I'm in a reading slump, I tend to find that a really good steamy, angsty, tension-filled romance will really pull me out of a slump because if I'm like invested in the romance and I just want to keep flipping the page and I just have like a smile on my face, that's what's going to help me out of it. So I stared at my library for like the past hour and I've chosen to start reading Boss Man by V. Keelan. So this is an enemies to lovers-esque workplace environment romance. I mean, I don't know if you could consider an enemies to lovers. It's more of just like a really bad first impression leading to a uh, we don't really get along or like each other in the workplace environment. So from the back of the book, it seems like it's this girl is on a date and she's not really liking her date. So she goes to the bathroom, calls her friend and starts complaining. And this guy overhears her and starts trying to give her like dating advice or something like that. And she's like, who are you? Like back off. I don't need you talking to me. I don't even know who you are. And then she goes back to her really bad date. And this guy decides to sit down at her table and start chatting her and her date up. And she's like, what the hell? And then anyway, I guess like sometime later, she ends up going into this interview or something like that. Maybe she just got hired for something. Anyway, the guy that ended up like talking to her at the like restaurant or whatever it was, is her new boss. And obviously they're not really going to get along because they had a really bad first experience of meeting and the story is going to go from there. So it sounds really good on the front of the cover. It says it's a dirty, office romance novel. So, I mean, I'm looking for some steam. I'm looking for some tension, some angst. The enemies to lovers-esque sort of thing will probably be a really good move for me. So I'm really crossing my fingers on this because I know it's only been like three books of a reading slump, but like I'm really getting sick of this.
So last night I ended up getting to page 130 and I'm actually really enjoying this book. I kind of had a smile on my face from chapter one. I swear, I feel like there's something about the first chapter if a book is going to like really pull you in or not. Like sometimes you have to work to get into a book, but sometimes it's just there for you. I really feel like I should start like getting books from actual bookstores and walking around and reading the first chapters of some books to see if like, oh my God, this is going to be a great book or is it just going to be like mediocre? Because I swear every time I'm pulled in to a book from the first chapter, it usually gets a five stars. And I really feel like this is on its way to a five star. So I was actually slightly wrong on my synopsis. It still started out the same way of they had that weird encounter in the restaurant and he ended up like joining her date and her for dinner. And like he started like making up stories that like they actually knew each other their whole life. And it ended up being a really fun night. And she actually didn't really hate him. She was actually really attracted to him. And like they were basically both attracted to each other right from the beginning. They didn't actually like hate each other from the beginning, which is what I thought it was going to be. But either way, it's really fun because now she's working for him and basically he's like coming on to her all the time, but she's like, you know, trying to push him off because like he's her boss and it's just, it's a really fun time. It's really steamy. I'm very much enjoying it and I am happy that I picked this up because it is definitely helping me out of my reading slump, but I'm still having a hard time like concentrating only because like when I get into a reading slump, my brain ends up going like every which way and I have a hard time just like focusing on a book, even if it's really good. So even even though this book is 100% helping me because it's actually really good and I am dying to like keep reading it. I don't think that this is going to be the last book that I read for this vlog. I think I need like two or three really good books in a row to like officially get me out of it. So we've got a while to go, but I am loving this so far. A little later. So I just finished this book and oh my God, did I love it. I had a smile on my face the entire time reading it. I'm definitely giving it a five stars and I thoroughly enjoyed the entire story. So I did notice that there were a little bit more of like intense topics going on in this book, just like in the other book that I read by V. Keel and Dan Penelope Ward. Like she likes to, I guess, like take away a little bit from the rom-com and put in something that like the main characters are going through or went through in their past, just to like make it a little bit Bit more intense and happens to be I really liked how it happened in this book so this was actually a dual POV and in the girl's point of view we were watching like the present day and then in the boy's POV we were watching seven years ago as he went through something in his past that was like really traumatizing that kind of like made him who he is today and happens to be what I really liked about it is how they kind of told us what happened in his past before we even really really saw it happening in his POV. And it wasn't like really a spoiler. It was just like, oh my God, that happened. And then all of a sudden you read it afterwards. And I really like that because sometimes when I'm dealing with like dual timelines sort of thing, I get a lot of anxiety being like, but what's going to happen? I really want to know the answer. Like I don't like not knowing. And in this book, it was like the best of both worlds because I got the dual POV. I got the dual timeline, but also I didn't have the anxiety that comes with it because just the way that that she laid it out in the present day where it's like you're finding it out but then also you're seeing it in the past and like how it really happened it just it worked out so well I literally cannot give this book any more praise than I'm trying to give so I loved the guy I loved the relationship I really liked the intensity that came into this book that just took it away from that like oh it's a little bit too steamy too rom com everything went perfect like it was a little bit less that it was more like oh these two people they went through some stuff and they can very much relate to each other because of their past but also it was a really steamy office romance with like really good characters and just the story overall it was just great I loved it how much more can I really say I very much recommend this um it definitely helped me out of this slump a little bit and I'm just hoping that the next book that I read is going to be good because like I'm on a roll of like getting out of this and being really down to read again so I mean I just gotta pick something really good next a few moments later. So I just spent the last little bit sitting in my library trying to pick out my next read and I narrowed it down to three options and then I really wasn't sure. So I told my husband what each of them are about and he ended up choosing for me and he chose Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. So this is a mafia romance that I'm almost positive is like an arranged marriage or something like that. And this is the first book in a companion series that is either like 
four, five, maybe six books long. So I'm actually very happy with his choice. First of all, he chose the spiciest one. So I feel like he just, he knows me well. But then also, if I end up liking this book, then I'm going to reward myself by ordering the rest of the series. So I feel like for multiple reasons, this was a good choice. So I am excited to get started on it, but I'm not going to be reading it right now. I first have to go and get my laundry out of the dryer so that I could make my bed because my sheets are in there and I want to do it before I get too lazy. And then also I have to go take my dog for a walk. So I'm going to do all of those stuff and then I'm going to come back and start this book. So I ended up reading this entire book last night in one sitting. So I'm sorry for not updating you, but it was just that good that I didn't want to put it down. And also it was like really late. I stayed up until like 1.30 in the morning reading this. After I updated you last, I ended up like watching a movie and like I don't know, doing random things. So I didn't end up picking it up until like 7.30 at night. And I read the whole thing in bed and it was just really good. I didn't want to put it down and it did officially help me out of my slump. So I'm giving this an easy five stars because it was really, really good. And did I tell you what it was about? It was like an arranged marriage mafia romance. This girl basically like burnt down the rival mafia's library. And instead of starting a war between like both families of the mafia, they decided to like make an arranged marriage and like join forces sort of thing. So this girl is forced to marry this guy that she really, really, hates from this like rival mafia thing so it's like an enemies to lovers arranged marriage and it was really good I very much liked it there was actually this quote in the end of the book on page 297 that said our relationship had proceeded in such a funny backward way marriage first then sex then getting to know each other and finally whatever this is a feeling of warmth and desire and affection and connection spreads through my chest a feeling that burns and grows stronger by the moment especially when I glance over at the man sitting next to me I can't believe it. I think I'm falling in love. And I mean, it was just so cute how backwards it was. And I really enjoyed reading this book. I very, very much liked it. So thank you so much to Sophie Lark for writing a book that officially helped me out of my slump. So because I don't feel like I'm in a slump anymore, I'm going to have to end this video. So I am curious to know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned in this vlog, or do you have any book recommendations for me based off of the books that I read and enjoyed in this video? So anyway, leave me a comment in the section down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not currently subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. And anyway, thank you for watching. And until next time, enjoy reading.